Hello and welcome to Tech24. I'm Rebecca Bowering. Coming up in the programme, publicity and piracy. The internet is a double-edged sword for the entertainment industry. Beyonce's newest tracks are no longer under wraps after her album was leaked online. Our guest this week tells us how the web can both make and break a music career. The Playbook tablet is Research in Motion's greatest hope of challenging the iPad 2. We'll check out the BlackBerry Maker's secret weapon that gives users access to some 13 million songs. But first, this week, pop star Beyonce tried to look on the bright side after tracks from her brand new, highly anticipated album started popping up online. In a statement, she said, My music was leaked, and while this is not how I wanted to present my new songs, I appreciate the positive response from my fans. The record, called Four, wasn't meant to come out until June the 28th. Beyonce's record label is now trying to track down the offending site. Well, my guest this week on Tech24 is Mark Thompson, music critic and founder of the website gigsinparis.com. Thanks so much for being with us, Mark. How damaging is it for an artist like Beyonce or maybe Lady Gaga to have their tracks leaked like this? And can we say the internet is both a help and a hindrance to artists? I think you can say that. I think free downloads and illegal downloads have really changed the industry as a whole. But I don't think it's completely damaging. Justin Bieber was caught on YouTube. Jesse J, YouTube, Arctic Monkeys, who are now a world-renowned band, they are now playing around the world, selling out shows, selling out festivals. And they started off on MySpace, just a small community. Illegal downloads spread around the UK. Suddenly, they were picked up by a large, major label. And now, the world is their oyster. What they have to do is to really change and be more innovative in the way they present their music, the way they promote their music. For example, Prince gave away one of his albums for free in a newspaper, whereas Radiohead gave away In Rainbows, well, they didn't give it away. They said, pay what you like. Give us what you think the album is worth. And the Kaiser Chiefs as well. And the Kaiser Chiefs more recently, yes. Uh, the, their latest album, what they're doing is they're getting fans to come onto their website to uh, pick their own 10 songs out of 20 to make up their own album and then choose their own artwork. So you get so, a personal touch. Exactly. So the album they're buying isn't the album the band wants to give you, it's the, it's the uh, album that you're choosing to buy. So let's talk about this in monetary terms because record labels and artists are having to adapt uh, and change their business model, this business model that's thrust upon them by uh, this abundance of free, illegal music online. In fact, we spoke to a record producer, uh, Simon Ashcroft, about this, and we asked him what bands and labels are doing to be more innovative and find other ways to make money. Now what, what people are looking at are bigger deals, like 360 deals that include publishing, live and records. The first company to do this was Live Nation when they signed Madonna from Warners for like millions and millions. They basically said, we're a company that promotes gigs and we're going to take Madonna's records and use those records to sell more gig tickets. Now, France is famed for its hardline anti-piracy Hadopi law. It's called the government is launching a huge new media campaign this week worth three million euros. What are your thoughts on regulation? Is it a real deterrent? The Hadopi law was a hard law for Sarkozy to actually bring through Parliament in the first place. It was only once he got the socialists to agree to abstain from voting that he actually managed to push it through. On top of that, it's a hard law to enforce, to regulate and to prove that it's actually working. The French government is saying that 50% of illegal users are now stopping. However, the statistics have been not misrepresented, but um, it's actually only 7% of respondents said that they had received a letter or knew someone who had received a letter. And only half of those said that they would not uh, download illegal music anymore. I know the UK are thinking about implementing a similar procedure, but there's a difference between introducing these laws and actually enforcing them. Um, just briefly, let's talk about Spotify, which is obviously a very well-known website. Recently limited the amount of free music you can get your hands on, 10 hours a month, no more than five plays of each song. And the French counter its French counterpart, Deezer, it also has cut back. Um, do you believe that people will start subscribing to the payable services? I think in the short term, this will be a viable business model, and I think people will use it. However, we have a precedent, and that is Napster. When Napster first started out, it was an illegal service which people could use freely and download free music uh, any time they wanted, whatever they wanted. But as soon as uh, labels started applying pressure and actually sued the company, they had to introduce a subscription service and people stopped using the service. Thanks for that, Mark. It's now time to move to our gadget section. So, 
on, we're talking gadgets, we're talking tablets, and Mark is showing off there the new BlackBerry Playbook by a Research in Motion, the Canadian company. They're hoping that it can knock the almighty iPad 2 off its pedestal. It's a very small slate, Mark. How does it feel to you, and how do you judge the interface? Well, it's certainly lighter than the iPad, and I think that will appeal to users. However, it's hard to see anyone taking this above an iPad if you don't have a BlackBerry, mm. because you need to work the two in sync and the usability factor is just so much better and more convenient on an iPad if you have all the other services. And of course, Apple has a monopoly on music downloads at the moment. Yeah, we'll come to that in just a second because we like the fact you can put it in your pocket or in your yeah. handbag. Um, we like the interface. It's pretty easy to use, isn't it? The BlackBerry tablet uh, operating system. Uh, it has Flash, which a lot of Apple products don't. But as you are saying, the cool connectivity features really have to do with BlackBerry. So if you don't have a BlackBerry, maybe you're not going to go for this. It can connect up to a, a projector if you want to do uh, PowerPoint presentations, which is kind of useful uh, for corporate uh, customers, certainly. BlackBerry Bridge is the setting that allows you to use this as a, as a screen screen alternative uh, viewing window for your smartphone. Now, three versions are coming out in France in a couple of weeks, 499 euros, same price as the iPad, so that's worth noting. Um, when it was released in the States, though, it didn't really make waves, and one of the reasons is because it has very few applications, um, no email, calendar or address book apps of its own, though those are supposed to be coming this summer. But what it does well and what you've been trying out is the media application. So we don't have software on there like iTunes, for example, but RIM has struck a deal with Seven Digital, creating this embedded music store that you can see here. 13 million tracks you can get your hands on, which is pretty impressive, stored in the cloud, and this is automatically available on all of the tablets. What do you think of the music store feature? Are you a fan? Well, it's certainly usable. Uh, you can guide yourself around very easily. I'm doing this upside down and it still works out pretty well. But um, again, I can't help but feel that if you have iTunes, unless you have a BlackBerry to work alongside this, you're not going to choose this ahead of an iPad. Just you are, this is more mobile and this is more comfortable to hold and it's lighter, but for long term usability and convenience, I do feel an iPad has the upper hand. And as you're saying, Apple still has a monopoly. 70% of legal downloads go through iTunes. So it'll be interesting to see if uh, RIM can help 7Digital to break that. Many thanks for all your expertise, uh, Mark you. Thompson. That brings us to the end of this edition of Tech24. Thanks to you for watching. Do fan us on Facebook forward slash Tech24. It's there in English and in French. And go to Mark's website. I urge you uh, everything you need to know, previews, reviews and news of all the top bands playing here in the French capital. That's on Gigs in Paris. Com. Now we leave you this week with a clip that poses the following question. What would it be like if your online life became a reality? Would you poke or follow a stranger? Would you write on their wall? Well, this video from the English National Opera, which is called Can I Be Your Friend, shows us just how bizarre our actions in cyberspace would be if they were translated into real life. Thanks for watching. See you next week here on Tech24. What's your relationship status? Um, single. Oh, good. Yeah. Cool. I like that. Do you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. I like your jacket. Thank you. I like your sunglasses. I like your Ray-Bans. <laughs>